lecturing an errant brat. I think you can quite easily imagine what went on in that wagon. Almost a pity you weren't a witness, actually. For you would have seen the conception of a new world. Not to mention an unparalleled lesson in lovemaking. Second time's a charm? Or have I asked too much of you? Try as he might, Tarquin cannot hide a small flash of surprise. Where did you hear that precisely? Never mind. The Aetirin is a children's fable, nothing more. Supposedly a wand with an infinite capacity for source. Pure nonsense, I assure you. Really? Well, perhaps that says more about the caliber of their intellect than anything else. Such a device would be a gross over-concentration of power. It could purge the entire world of all source. Luckily, the laws of the universe render such a thing impossible. The blade quivers as Tarquin nears it and hums a response. An unfallen reveal. Amadio Vlucio di Anme Drita Dumores. Oh, very good. Very, very, very good. This, my friend, is the key. Give me some time, and every deity in existence will tremble at the sight of you. He holds out his hand expectantly. Now, if you'll excuse me, I must work. Tarquin turns away, but continues to mutter excitedly, almost religiously, about anathema. Good to see you again. Marvelous ship you have here. Worthy of a king. She intrigues me greatly. I'd say it was brave of her to send you after a demon hunter, but bravery implies something to be feared. She's fearless. One eye is sun, one eye is moon. I wonder which half of her nature she yearns will prevail. Our mission has a name, Adramalik. He is the fiend that possesses you, but worry not. We'll find him, and we'll undo him. To the city of Arx we must go, where he disguises himself as Dr. Deva. So, Losa. Have you figured out what to do about your little parasite? You don't need me to remind you how important it is you don't let it fester. She stares at you, her face frozen, then blinks once, slowly, and snaps back to life. Well, then we'll have to think of something else, won't we? Don't worry, Losa dear. Mama Malady will think of something. Her eyes flash with something, anger perhaps, or fear. I... But... Never mind. We'd better focus on the task at hand. She looks straight ahead, ignoring you. Well, aren't you industrious? It seems all the riffraffs back aboard as well. Ready to set sail when you are, your holiness. Now, on to the interesting part. 
After many adventures, the party finally reached the place where Godwoke can go to become divine. But more surprises and difficult choices awaited. Here we are, the Nameless Isle. I imagine the demon inside you is all a flutter with excitement. And no wonder, divinity is near at hand. Incredibly near. I trust that you'll keep him in check now more than any other time. If you don't, the result will be cataclysmic. Apocalyptic. Very, very. Carrying on, then. Still, it's what's on the inside that counts, isn't that right? And this is the place you're meant to become a god. You can't help but wonder exactly what you intend to do with such a power. All the better. Power is best wielded by those who have no desire for it. You will do well, I'm certain of it. You'll want to hurry now. Divinity is waiting, after all. Excellent question. Normally, this place ought only to be known to Godwoken, but judging by the ships burning in the bay, there's been a uh, breach, let's call it. Regardless of who's on the island, all that matters is who ascends. Make sure that's you. The strongest will survive and ascend. I'm hardly an expert on the matter, but I'm smart enough to put two and two together. Where there is an ocean of source, there is a well for drawing from it. To rise to divinity, you probably need to take a gulp. Though I'm sure it won't be that simple. I can sense the raw powers of the source rippling through the air. The island yonder. It is doom or destiny. Your mind, the demon that's in there. As long as it possesses you, divinity will be his, not yours. You mustn't give it the chance, Losa. Gareth greets you warmly. He's oddly chipper. More chipper than you've ever seen him, and certainly more chipper than most people mourning dead loved ones. I should thank you. I don't know what came over me. Praise Lucy and I had you to put me on the right track. I am feeling, well, if not good, then certainly better. I just needed time to think. My parents led good lives. I'd rather celebrate them for the love they gave me than to wail over their loss. Besides, we have work to do. Once we anchor at the Nameless Isle, I'll scout ahead. See if I can help locate the council and ease the way. I'll report to you on what I find. Nonsense. I just had to take time to renew my spirit. Lucian said, I will refresh the tired and satisfy the weary. Words as true today as when he said them. Gareth offers his farewell and hums to himself. You recognize the tune, Blessed and Bold. A hymn praising Lucian. Hello? This... Of course! Told you 
I would, didn't I? Sure thing. I'll stop. Corbin, the Fletcher you rescued from Roost Anon at the Culwood Mills, sparks to life at the sight of you and breaks into a great grin. Oh yeah. Oh, I mean, hey, how are you? All settled in myself? Can't tell you how glad I am to be here. And thank you for bringing me. The little girl doesn't acknowledge your presence. She remains locked away somewhere deep within her own mind. Dangers indeed. You can almost hear the sounds of battle when the wind shifts correctly. And where there's battle, there's bound to be mercenaries. Glechu Duma, the words of the lone wolves. No doubt my former comrades will have them in their employ. Speak their words, and you might pass. Speak their words, and you might pass. Consider it a token of my thanks for the assistance in retrieving an earth. Pursuit of my interests has led me to fall in with some disreputable company in my time. For a short while, one such group was the Black Ring. I know, I know, not something to be proud of, but they let me do as I wished, so desperate they were for aid after the death fog cut them down to size. A fine arrangement, until so they started preaching about this god king and his infernal covenant. He snorts derisively. The last thing this world needs is another would-be god, and an army of fools willing to follow him. There's a clue in the name. He's a god, or something that wants to be a god. Continue to march to the Seven's Beat, and I'm sure you'll find out exactly what he is. They're all the same, you know. Tyrants, liars, carrion birds, the best thing would be for them all to destroy each other and leave the rest of us to live in peace. It's a sop to all the fools who think that someone will grant them power and immortality in return for loyalty. This God King has caused to make war with the Seven, and the Covenant is how he's gathered his army. They become sworn, as it was put to me, bound to serve, die, and be reborn for the God King for as long as he wishes. Then, at some ill-defined point in the future, they think they'll be rewarded. You should have seen them all. On their knees, worshipping a new tyrant just to spite seven old ones. I got away from them while I still could. Unfortunately, Dallas was waiting to snatch me. Do what you must at this place, sorcerer. I don't want to linger a moment longer than necessary. Carefully, my dear. Those are black ring banners that I spy on the shore. I studied the tablet that you so generously provided. It showed me everything I need to know about creating a functional sworn breaker. Once I have that, I'll be free of the Covenant. And free to spend the rest of my days with Mahali. See those structures further inland? Remarkably like those from the caverns of the Black Pits, aren't they? Should you discover the parts needed for a sworn breaker, please bring them to me. I'll make it worth your while. Also, you will likely encounter sworn followers of the God King on that island, I suspect. I would avoid combat if possible. Death can be less than final for them, if the God King wills it. Almira doesn't respond right away. Instead, she turns and gazes intently at the island. After a long moment, she finally speaks. 
I sense a familiar presence. The Sallow Man. Yes. He's there somewhere. Likely commanding Black Ring forces. You should seek him out. He's a foul creature, but not opposed to cutting a deal. Beware his underlings, though. If they challenge your presence, pose as a thrall of mine, and you should gain safe passage. My name should still command respect among them. This place is turbulent. I can feel the ground quake of the sea's boil. The young of God here. I've never seen ruins like these. You don't get out much, do you? Black Ring. Could they be doing the purging? The plot thinens. As if from nowhere, a sweating warrior appears before you. Who the hell's be you? My gut misgives. The time's too short for doubt. Who be you, really? This satisfies him. He points you down the lines to where a skirmish still continues. Then get to work right quick, you wolf, and earn you a keep. The order sends its swine, and you must help us kill them. Move, Merc. Then get you out to it.
The altar stands before you, flecked with moss and the cracks of age. An ant crawls across the surface, dipping in and out of the inscription that's engraved on the rock. In honor of Ralik, first of the gods and patron of humanity. As your prayer drifts away on the breeze, you feel the world around you shift. You open your eyes to a courtyard with wooden targets and practice posts scattered about. A man stands in the center of the court, his face turned towards the sun, his eyes wide open. He's old, gray hair matted against his skin, but you still recognize him, Ralik. He doesn't look over as you approach. It's only when you're standing right beside him that you see that his eyes are clouded and gray as his hair. He is completely blind. Go, God Woken. Find the Well of Ascension. Do your duty. The vision fades, and you stand once more in the shadow-speckled glade of Ralik's temple. Looking down at the altar, you see a faded symbol for the sun carved into the rock. You're not the thrall I've been promised, but you might be something to practice on until he arrives. He pulls a small dagger from his robe and leans in close to examine you. You see that he's covered in a patchwork of tiny scars. Such a pristine hide. Your skin will make a beautiful canvas. Your time will come, slay. Fight well for underlings, and you shall have more. You may even kill a god Vulcan if you can find one. Maybe even old Alex himself. Do not be so eager, underling. It won't be you who kills him. You fight well. But not that well, huh? When the Lady Vengeance breached the Hall of Echoes, you assumed he was dead. If he still thinks he's the one that will replace Daddy Dearest, he's in for a surprise. How spectacular. Did you see the light fade from their eyes? their expressions as they pass from this world. The necromancer looks wistfully at one of the bodies. To experience the transcendental, there is such beauty in it all. Oh, yes. Yes, martial combat is all well and good for lesser creatures, but I'm talking about the metaphysical, the moment when you reach out to touch the void. What do you see? What do you experience? What secrets does the universe reveal? I wish I could feel it. Just once before our God King raises the faithful to immortality, before the chance is gone forever. Well, yes. Aren't you curious? I want to experience that moment, that fleeting moment as soul and body float apart. Of course, our Lord will resurrect the faithful when he himself is reborn. For us, death is a temporary inconvenience. So, perhaps you could perform a service for your betters and inconvenience me? Give me that gift. Because suicide is a different matter entirely. If I were discovered with my own hand on the blade, my right to eternity would be revoked. Our Lord prefers his servants to be useful to the end. But if it was your hand, well, you aren't even initiated. What could you possibly have to lose? What? With that? Please, we are not slaughtering farm animals. He reaches into his robes and pulls out a dagger. Its long, thin blade looks wickedly sharp. The necromancer grins as he hands it to you and pulls aside the cloth covering his heart. Here, 
Strike true, and let us see what awaits me. He gasps in shock. The knife pushes through flesh, muscle, chips a rib, and enters his beating heart. He falls forward, clutching at you. <sighs> oh. Oh, my. His hands curl around your neck, and as his eyes meet yours, he opens his mouth to speak again, and the light fades from his eyes. You pull the gore-covered dagger from his chest, and his body slumps to the ground, limp and still. moment when soul and flesh parted ways. It was like my hair was being ripped from my scalp, like my skin was being flayed from my body all at once. I have never felt such horror. It was... Oh, exquisite. With twinkling eyes visible through his helm, the Reaver offers you an apple. Shiny and red. It is perfect in every way. He shakes his head and points to your mouth, beckoning for you to open it. He holds the apple to your lips. It feels not cool and dry, but warm and wet. He squeezes. Liquid, warm and coppery, fills your mouth, drips down your throat, spills on... The reaver begins to laugh. The spirit of a paladin stands before you. He shoots you a hostile glare. Get away from me, Blackwing Lackey! Get your soft ass to the camp and report. Do it now. The spirit of a magister brandishes her sword in one hand, while the other is clasped to a wound in her side. She throws a hasty glance over her shoulder. There's too many of them. Get the bishop to the elven temple. We'll hold them off as long as we can. She turns her attention forward once more, her eyes darting between foes in several directions. Bishop? Wait, Alexander is here. This elven temple may warrant investigation. <laughs> This place will be nice when it's finished. Let us knock it all down and start again. 